welcome everybody to the first Census Lab Forum for 2019. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the actor before the real. Um, yes, yeah, so it's a great pleasure to welcome um, Seth Chan and, um, and Lucy Patterson from ATME who've uh, come out today to tell us a little bit about the rejuvenation and new exciting things that are happening at ATME over the next many years is it going to be? Two? Uh, close May, yeah. open about May next, next year. That's the plan, yeah. It's yeah. pretty on track at the moment. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. <laughs> um, so please join me in making them feel welcome and, and thank you for coming out um, to give us a talk. Thanks, Amy. Um, so Lucy's uh, product manager works in the experience team um, and I'm the CXO. Yeah, and it's, uh, I guess we'll just bounce around things. Um, I thought we'd talk a bit about what the sort of context of what we're doing and then when the streaming stops, we can talk about some of the nitty gritty of that. There's some stuff we, we want to show you that maybe some other people haven't seen yet. Um, so, this is us, you probably visited us, doesn't look like this at the moment. Those little Chevron things have turned around and now I'm gone maybe. Anyway. Um, if you haven't come and seen the clock, we've got the clock running at the moment. The great Christian Mark with Mark Lay work. Thursday night's the all-nighter, so you come in Friday morning. Like, the, the early morning is really awesome, like 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Yeah. It's near uh, the station. So. Um, so we've sort of started calling ourselves since Katrina Sed Sedgwick started as CEO. So she started in 2015. Both Lucy and I joined sort of after that, uh, late 2015, early 2016. Um, so we've been saying with the National Museum of Film, TV, Video Games, Digital Cult, Culture and Art, and this sort of repositioning... Uh, so psych, psych, psychological or philosophical repositioning is interesting in that um, for a long time it's felt like the place being the centre for the moving image has sort of de-centred de 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 its authority. So by calling ourselves a museum now, it's about bringing some expectations that people should have of us. If we pro program some, something like Christian Mark, Mark, Mark Lay, we should know about uh, uh, collage, cut-ups, Remix. We should know about those and not just show Mark Mark Markley as a thing. So you, as a visitor, should ex should should expect we might talk about precedents in video art and other stuff. We might have stuff in the, the collection as well. Um, so we're massively vis visited. No surprise, but it is surprise actually. So I used to work in the Powerhouse Museum in Sydney, um, and the Powerhouse was lucky if it got six hundred thousand visitors a year. So bigger than a lot of other museums around Australia, which is good. Uh, you know, these are the quantitative things that we report in the annual report. Lots of figures, but the figures don't capture the impact, which is often the qualitative stuff. So you may also be, be aware that we make exhibitions that tour around the world. Game, Game Masters just opened in Minnesota, in Minneapolis. This has been on the road since 2013. Um, has been to every continent pretty much now. Dream, DreamWorks has just opened in Rio and has done in the first week something like 70,000 people or something. It's crazy figures. So we make exhibitions that then go out and tour. And often um, uh, people don't realise that some of the exhibitions we make, you know, we have an ex ex exhibition building and touring arm that makes things that uh, go far and wide. Uh, we also, under Katrina, really rebooted com commissioning. So lots of art, 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 art kind of commissions that, again, people don't know that we necessarily do. So Soda Jerk was one of our, com our commissions, been touring around every festival and museum since it launched. It was great. Uh, Zanny Begg, uh, which is up in um, Sydney at the moment, again, will go on a circuit following that. Christian Chris Tom Thompson and Joan Ross have both done. VR pieces, uh, which are part of the Morden, um, Morden Family Mixed Reality com Commission. The third one has just opened, I believe, for applications. Uh, yeah, so commissioning has been a thing that we haven't really... People don't realise that we commission stuff. They come and see it, but they don't really necessarily realise it's a we com commission. Also, we have a large collection that's been increasingly dig digitised, amateur video, film, uh, Victoriana, the old state kind of film film centre archive. We also have about seven seven thousand video games in the 
their collection as well. Again, a thing that people may not know. And increasingly, we're seeing this be digitised and then be, ex be, ex be, ex be exposed to computer vision tools and other things to, ex to extract other ways of making meaning from it, making, making it searchable, or, or all of that. And you'll see more of that in the new galleries as well. Um, and of course, we've, we have our co-working space and accelerator pro program. So we have an accelerator that we run out of here, and we also uh, co, co, kind of, co kind of run an accelerator with the state kind of library. So we have two accelerator programs that take technologists, particularly working in the creative arts space, and run, run, run them through a business accelerator, or sort of a fusion of a business accelerator and arts accelerator. So the co-working space is six, 60 desks, so it's, it's, it's pretty big. And what's nice about that is it puts the staff very close to people who are actually working in the field and researchers as well. So RMIT and University of Melbourne both have six kind of desks each that they've uh, sponsored. Um, that they have their postgrads and staff work working from as well. So that border be between um, the academics and uh, the staff is very, very um, small, which is great. Um, so also in our sort of intermediate rebrand, so obviously with the relaunch of the building, there will be a rebrand, um, new identity, all that stuff. Uh, we're saying we're, we're a place for watchers, players and makers, and that that um, that is something that perhaps has started to come out in some of some of the programming and the design of the place now too, but will be more to the fore when we reopen. And of course, we have these three key key audiences or state stakeholder um, hold, uh, hold, um, holder groups, and we're doing this big re redevelopment. Um, government's been very supportive of this. Uh, it's a forty million dollar redevelopment of which uh, the state government's pro provided roughly thirty five million of. Um, so with that, you're going to get a set of new permanent galleries since these slides were done. It's become galleries, how we cut up space and all of that, which is super exciting. Technology enhanced visitor experience and audience lab, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, media preservation lab, uh, uh, which is also exciting, and a new learning, learning cen centre. And, you know, what, what's interesting about the institution, which is quite different to other inst 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 institutions, uh, is that, you know, we say we're the National Museum of all these things, but really that's all the stuff you can watch at home or get on your phone in your pocket. So un kind of like other museums, the uniqueness of our stuff is all about the experience of it, not it itself. Uh, we have Roma playing in our cinemas now, for example. You can watch Roma on, Net Roma on Net uh, Netflix, but it's different when you see it in our cinema even though the content is the same, the experience of that isn't. Um, and we need to be able to communicate why it's dif different, because a lot of people don't go to cinemas at all. Uh, you know, I, I, one of my um, children's friends has never, been to, has never taken their kids to an actual cinema. Though they watch films, they've never been to an actual cinema. So, yeah, that sort of notion of what might that be? Why, why would I want to go? That's the thing that we work work with. Um, so I'm going to skip a bunch of slides here because they're not really very interesting. Um, so what's it going to look like? Well, we're not going to change the outside of the building. And if you read the art, art, article in the Spectrum on the weekend, uh, you might have seen some of these photos, uh, but here's some other ones. Um, the es escalators are going, and it's much more welcoming when you come in from Flinders Street. Uh, it'll be much more a space to hang out in and dwell. That current really cold uh, retail mall, shopping mall vibe is softened quite a lot by uh, these sorts of things. Um, and up, up upstairs, if you come in from Federation Square, and since Katrina started, she reopened the doors on Flinders Street. And when she did in that first year, 30% more increase in vis visitation just by opening the doors on Flinders Street. Since kind of then, it's about a 50-50 split, people coming in from the square and people coming in from Flinders Street. And it's interesting because if you come in from different ways, you have different ex expectations of what the building has in it and what it might be. Flind Flind Flinders Street and the Lightwell space, uh, Federation Square floor, so you'll be able to see all the way through, um, up to the cinemas, uh, welcome desks, lounge and all of this sort of stuff. Uh, when you come into the new permanent galleries, um, you, you will be on kind of boarded into an experience, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and the new permanent galleries, which is where the current screen, screen worlds is, much more open. 
um, a lot less dense, um, better planned and constructed around a flow. So at, so at kind of the moment you come into the space and there's multiple ways you can go and it's like a cacophony of screens, which was aesthetically right for 2008, but not for now. Um, this will take you through um, starting off with the basic principles of the moving image with light and shadow and motion and then in kind of to the technologies that um, allow us to make and present that um, and then into the craft of making that so costume design cinematography uh, cinematography editing sound uh, gameplay all of those sort of um, crafts um, and it's particularly important around the crafts because uh, Melbourne as well has is such a home to those crafts um, and those crafts are oft, often in the serve, 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 service of productions that are being made on the other side of the world. The Game of Thrones battle scenes done for America, done in Melbourne for example, that sort of stuff. Uh, video games and other stuff as you know. So up on the next, next floor up, a media preservation lab, uh, taking the conservation work that we do and putting that right up in front of people. So this is almost where the shop is now. So if you come in from Federation Square, the shop's on the left, that's on the left now, uh, which is quite an interesting way to bring people straight into the preservation of analog media, the digitization of um, that media as well as mag magnetic media, but also uh, time-based media art conservation, preservation and digital preservation as well. So those, and what we're trying to do is explore both and uh, we've just been successful in two AR ARCs, uh, one of them around uh, preservation of 1990s video games, uh, which starts this year, uh, which is about setting up an emulation as a serv service node, which will run out of here, which will allow um, uh, the, em the, em the emulation of operating system environments up till the early 2000s and streamed. So that means old CD-ROM art and other things can be presented over the web. You might have seen this at places like Ryzone um, and others in the States. But it also allows video games and other stuff to, to be preserved. The other ARC, is, uh, which just got announced this, 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 this week, uh, is in uh, collaboration with ser several other arts institutions, uh, looking at the ar ar archives of ANAT. Experimenta and Deluxe Media Arts and the Griffith Media Griffith University uh, Museum Archives as well. So, so really, um, um, Australia's early role in um, media art and video art. Uh, some of that will be coming through this preservation lab too. So, this practice of visible cons conservation is very common in the um, uh, paintings world and in the dinosaur museum world. So now we're working with dinosaur media and also new media as well. So that's kind of exciting. Um, and also something I think that's, you know, taps into some of the work we're doing with uh, vi visual effects companies and with video game developers around how might you be making things so they can be preserved. Um, and the choices that get done uh, during the making process and make that much easier. So onto the tech technology in the gallery itself. Um, some people may know I used to work at the Smithsonian for the Cooper Hewitt and there uh, w with a bunch of firms we made a thing called the pen. Uh, people haven't seen that I can show that but I will skip that for now. Here um, very early on we, we figured that we needed a way for visitors to connect what they see in the galleries and in the museum to the world of con 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 content that's in their pocket. So that notion of being able to uh, collect things in um, the museum and for the, the museum to then make a series of rec recommendations based on the things you have collected to change your watching and playing habits. To tell, tell, tell you about the things that inspired Roma and make them available to you. To tell you about Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption 2 and the cinem cinematic references in that as well as the video game references in that as well, that sort of thing. Um, so uh, very early on we were working with this notion of a lens, giving visitors a lens and the lens has changed shape and form and it's not like that anymore but it's sort of similar anyway. Um, and that lens, um, Lucy did some work on our most recent exhibit uh, with a with a take-home printable map, uh, paper map, and we've been experimenting with these physical uh, to tokens within the galleries that allow things to change and 
to create value beyond the ex beyond the moment you're in the experience. So the lens, the con constellation, which doesn't look like that either, and a post visit that doesn't look like that either. I will show you how those look a little later now, uh, once we go to the not streaming part of this. Um, <laughs> Notion again that visitors move through the gallery and everything in the gallery becomes collect collectible. Um, and that's not just in the gallery, it's in the build building as a whole. And this notion that the constellation takes the things that you have collected and takes you to con 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 content to explore further. That all the things that we've pulled out of the world or replicated from the world is actually part of a universe of media and it's about revealing the relationships between the media we've pulled into the galleries and the media that you have access to in your home and pocket. So I'll go into that in a little bit later. The Audience Lab, um, this came out of some work with R with RMIT uh, very early on um, with their design fac faculty around this notion. So um, of there's so many makers in Melbourne, uh, filmmakers, video game makers, artists, and when I used, used to work at the Powerhouse, we had a place called Beta Space, and Beta Space was a gallery where uh, media artists could come in and test works in public, and they could sort of usability test contemporary media art, which changed how media artists made works because they cared about the viewer more than they perhaps otherwise would have, and it also helped uh, people study the usability of media art. Um, so the Audience Lab uh, riffs off that idea but takes it more into the commercial space. Uh, and says, okay, if you're making a in the kind of a, 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 I'm, I'm an interdependent game, film or television piece, come and test test it with our one and a half million visitors. That's awesome. So you do early te testing, and we've done this with a series of titles that are out in the mark mark market now, as well as with the R the RMIT games um, course, as well as commercial products too, where. Makers bring in a product very early in its development and at an early release stage too. And they show them to the public in a curated environment. And they talk to the, the public and the public users, play, play, play tests or, play, or watch uh, watches pre-screeners pre of their material, gives them feed, feedback. What's great for the visitor is the visitor gets to see who makes this stuff that people like them usually, um, and that things take a long time to make, and that even if you're making a video game, you don't necessarily have to know how to code. There's all these other skills that people need too. Narrative, um, design, uh, graphic kind of de de um, design, animation, all this other stuff. And it opens up opportunities for kids and others to go, hey, that could be me. I might do that too. So that's kind of a, it's, it's a two-way two sharing process. So, the Audience Lab um, has been running in prototype stages already. Um, that will become boosted. The whole series of Audience Lab programs once we reopen. Uh, and I think that's something that's really open to all collaborators as well. So this could also be product kind of designers, anyone making things that are in our, in our space. Um, so uh, let's... Uh, now, Lucy, what do you reckon? There's so many things. We could talk about that, but we'd have to stop the stream. We could talk about this. Should we do this? All right. Okay, so part of this, you're probably going like, how the hell is that going to work? So in here, uh, we've been building a thing in-house, which used to be called the Museum OS, and now it's called the XOS. Or we st I still call it the Museum OS because I, I think it's more descriptive, but that's just me. Um, I think we probably wanted to call it the Museum OS, but then other people thought it would do things that it obviously doesn't do. Um, so what's interesting about this is it's built in-house, and this is, a, this is an API um, a framework that sits above different sy systems in the museum and makes them easy for other people to build, ex build things on top of, including ourselves. So this is also part of an organisational shift that it's kind of I talked a little bit about previously is about shifting the, Im the impact of what we do from being in um, the moment to being something that has lasting value for a visitor. Um, so, you know, it's a sort of notion of things moving from just being points to lines to a net network. So in the old days before Katrina started, you know, we really cared that people had a great experience when they visited the museum. So we got an ex ex exhibition about Clever Man, the television series in our gallery now, right? 
So the, what we cared about was, did you come to, to Clever Man? Cool, right? But we, you know, that was enough, and we would report the attendance figures, and that was great. So now we've started caring that people had a great, ex great, ex great experience, and then went further. So if you came to the Clever Man show, that's great. But act actually, wouldn't it be great if you, that triggered you to watch the see, watch the series? Because if it's not triggering you to watch the series, you've just had a momentary experience in our galleries. That can be great, but it hasn't really changed your engagement with media. So the future vision is about that notion of, I went to Clever Man, I watched the series, but then I realised that there are other first, first kind of nations, super, superheroes, out in the world, and this institution might know about some of them. So it's that notion of the, ex, the, ex, the, ex, the expertise, the expectation of the institution being beyond just what we show but the topic areas and subject matter that go beyond that too. Um, and, and this is the long game. This is not something that we open in 2020 where you can suddenly ask, 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 ask us about experimental film from the 1960s that isn't in our collection. Well, you probably could, but you get different answers anyway. Depends who you ask. But you know what I mean. So, so it's building that sort of expectation, that scaffolding that allows visitors to expect something more from us. It's a bit like if I go to the end, I can remember G GV, I expect them to know a bunch more stuff than what they have on show. But if I go to the art centre and they have uh, a circus on, I don't expect them to know all about circuses. Or if they have, a, they, they, they have a band on, I don't expect them to know about all of the things in that genre. genre. Right. Um, so the new, new gallery experiences I've been through, uh, been through this, lens readers on labels, um, constellation, things I've saved. And, and really what's happening with the, the XOS, or the, the Museum OS, is it sits on top of exist, um, um, existing systems, like our collection management systems, uh, which is called Vernon, and that knows where things are. It manages licensed media and loaned media. It's the long-term re re repository of what we must preserve and know, and know about. We have a tessitura, ticketing and CRM system, and these systems do what they do very well, but they're not built to interoperate with everything else. And their competitors don't either because they're in these narrow verticals. So the exhibition OS or the XOS is about knitting all of that to together. Um, because when we reopen the building, and this is an open uh, system that you and others will be able, be, able, be able to build experiences on top of in, in the future too, when we reopen the building, because we've got those, the, the lens and other things, um, the XOS needs to know where things are, not only in space, like what room and what shelf it's on, but in time too, because we have screens, and those screens are playing different media at different times. Uh, one screen playing music videos might need to have a label that changes as different music videos are played. And when this music uh, video is playing, uh, I want to be able to save that, but the next one comes up, I want it to, I want it to be for the right one. So anyway, yeah, I think that's kind of clear. Um, and it needs to deliver that object label in real time. Not to everything, but to the things that are on screens. Um, captions, uh, super important for accessibility. Um, and the, this, of course, drives the post-visit post website. Um, so behind the scenes, stuff's held in Vernon, uh, media, transcoding objects as well. Um, exhibitions are made of things and media, and when they're in Vernon, we know what shelf they're on now. Uh, manually written labels at the moment. Curators write these and store, store, store them in Microsoft Word doc, doc, documents in some big folder in the sky. Uh, hard to find later. And we manually transcode media right, right kind of now. It's easier to, to do that. In the future, though, wall, wall labels will be delivered from that system. So as something change, change, changes, the wall label will change too. Um, and of course, we tra transcode and de deploy media centrally through this as well. Super, super good. Um, moving into the exhibition itself, of course, in the ex exhibition, people can play and make on a series of in, 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 in interactive experiences, and they collect these experiences with their lens. And on the floor, everything can be collected. Um, as well, cinema goers, if you've gone and seen Roma on the way out of the cinema, you can collect the film notes for Roma on the way out. We have a great essay on Roma on our website. But if you came to our cinema 
and saw Roma, you wouldn't know it was there. Like, it's kind of crazy making. Um, that essay is really good, and you don't have to see it anywhere. You just go and read it if you see it on net Netflix as well. And it's that sort of notion of using the gallery space as a way to surface knowledge and media that exists on the kind of line as well as in the physical space. Um, and because media players are synchronised and we have captions for everything, then you can translate into other languages as well. But that's kind of cool, right? Um, and of course, we aggregate the data and anonymize it and all of that. So we know what things are popular and what things aren't and how people are engaging with that. And all of that leads to the post visit, um, which again, you can log into your lens and you get all the things that you've seen and collected. And what's interesting with the lens, very different to the work I've done previously, was you take the lens home. The lens comes home with uh, you and we've managed to get it down to a, a unit cost that allows that to happen so that you actually leave with a physical thing, um, like a, a, a token, a memorabilia token, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, and you can see everything that you've collected. Not only that, you presented with the um, context, uh, contextual material and the relationships between that and other things. And of course, recommendations and other things from the con 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 constellation. This becomes the core of how we do our public con content experiences and allows that to link and aggregate across time. And of course for education vis visits, that's obviously super great. Uh, imagine you're bringing in a group of students, first kind of year film kind of students into our galleries. The lecturer or tutor can actually then give everybody the same experience or look at the different uh, experiences different people have had too. As, and also the students can too. Uh, kit of parts, loose, loose, loosely coupled with, ap with, with, with APIs that will be public facing, open, um, um, open kind of source tools, built around notions of resilience, um, and use, using com commodity physical components. Uh, that's probably all I need to do with that deck. Moving on to another deck now. There's like a billion decks here. Maybe um, if we stop the stream, Lucy can show some other cool stuff that we've been testing. Can you want to do that? Well, it's just, you know. <laughs> okay. So, you'll see. So there's no going back if you only Hey, there's no going back. Well, that's all right. <laughs> that's if, all right. if you're not here, you're missed, missed out, right? Oh. Let's end with applause then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Farewell, internet.